it's a badge that we wear with pride. Everybody in the mentoring project knows exactly what it means. It's just a way of signalling to people that this is something in which they can have they can have faith. If an organisation has a quality standard, then I would tend to view them as an organisation that's been externally verified and therefore is doing good work. It helps you to, to review your practice, it helps you to understand where the gaps are in your service provision um, and in terms of the way in which you're actually running your programmes. It may identify weaknesses, for example, in the way in which you recruit or train volunteers or in the way in which you evaluate projects. But put simply, um, one of the biggest benefits is clearly going to be in your ability to promote the fact that you've got that standard to potential volunteers and to clients and to uh, purchase or purchasers or funders of the service. My role is to talk to organisations applying to the Foundation. Um, what we're looking for is to ensure that we're investing in well-run organisations that see quality as being important. While we would never ask um, an organisation or, or, or require an organisation to have uh, approved provider status, it's very useful. It ticks some boxes for us. It tells them that they're thinking about the same things we're thinking about. Once we got the approved provider standard, we became much more confident in our abilities to deliver the service locally. We knew, because we had a good reputation, we knew we were doing well, but it gave us I suppose that external validation that you are doing things properly and you are working to uh, you know, good practice standards. It's a huge kite mark for such a small organisation to have a quality standard specific to something such as befriending because it gives funders great confidence that in, in your abilities to deliver. If there weren't quality standards like APS, um, I'd be worried that there would be lots of organisations out there doing what could be quite potentially tricky work around mentoring and befriending and not necessarily having the opportunity of having that externally verified or knowing that what they're doing is actually the right way of going about things. So I think I'd be worried that, that there wasn't that source of, source of information, there wasn't someone actually telling organisations this is really what you should be thinking about when you're involving volunteers in mentoring and befriending. I think it's very important when you're dealing with uh, you know, different ages mentoring each other, with, with adults mentoring uh, young people. Uh, you, obviously, all our mentors are criminal records checked, but you know, that, that goes without saying. There's then the added peace of mind that comes from you know, somebody else having taken a look at not only what we do, but the way in which we do it. Um, that helps give that added sense of security, if you like. It can be quite hard to know that what you're doing is right, is correct, particularly around mentoring and befriending where there, there may be issues around safeguarding, for example. So having a quality standard which can help you actually check what you're doing to make sure that it is correct, that you are keeping people safe, that kind of information is really helpful to organisations. So I think if you are a new organisation starting a new programme, something like AEPS is the kind of thing you need to go through just to make sure that you're doing everything that you should be. I think APS is, is extremely important to uh, projects. It's, it, it's actually a way of benchmarking their practice. There are 500 projects now, more than 500 projects that have achieved the standard. Um, there's another 250, approximately 250 organisations that are working towards the standard. So we've come a long way, I think, um, in the last sort of two years uh, in terms of developing and promoting the standard and encouraging organisations to achieve it. This is a proper process, all the staff are involved and it's meaningful. So it, it highlights your strengths, but even more importantly, because you're wanting to improve, it highlights your weaknesses and allows you to address them. APS actually speaks to, to volunteers, it speaks to clients, it speaks to government departments that um, are supporting mentoring and befriending through their policies, it speaks to funders who may be supporting projects in their region and I think it also speaks to um, local government, um, PCTs, 
other organisations that are actually sort of in the business of purchasing services to um, to work with um, disadvantaged groups. Um, it, it tells them basically that they can invest in a quality um, programme. It, it sends out a great message to everybody that's involved, whether that's young people, parents, and particular funders, and all the uh, different outfits that you're going to be working with the council. You don't get this unless you're well organised, well run and professional. I would definitely say to anybody who is considering or sitting on the fence with regards applying for approved provider standards, I would just say go for it. Go for it, go for it, go for it. No doubt about it. It, it really focuses you in on what you're doing what you're trying to achieve, where you're going, because that's a very important factor. And the process involved was, was actually more important than achieving 